good. Well, at this point I wanted to do an introduction of my video, but somehow I covered the microphone so you can't hear anything. I was saying something like good morning, it is Thursday the 26th of September 2019. And today is a kind of a special trip report, because I won't go on a regular train, I will go on a tourist train to the DMZ, the Demilitarized Zone. It was only two days before I shot this video that the South Korean President Moon proposed at the United Nations to rename the DMZ into the International Peace Zone. This won't be a regular trip report, it's not specifically about a train, it's about an excursion by train. In the DMZ there is a station of course, and well, I will explain things later on in this video. Enjoy the video! The DMZ train runs a couple of times per week and goes to the border with North Korea. The DMZ is a buffer zone between the North, North Korea and South, South Korea. These two countries are technically still in war with each other. The border is really quiet nowadays, there's a ceasefire going on for a long time, but there is no peace, and you notice this in everything when you're in South Korea. One thing I noticed during my trip, that the South Koreans absolutely don't want a war. But with a northern neighbor that can be unpredictable and a strong army, you need to be ready for everything when it happens. When you enter the DMZ, you technically leave South Korea. So in theory, this makes it the only international train you can find in South Korea. The information I found in English was pretty limited about this excursion, but I will get back to this later on in the video. In Seoul station there's a travel agency where you can buy tickets for this train and also, well, buy the whole package, so tickets and excursion. I purchased my tickets online via the Corail website. In the train you can buy the excursion, so that's about 35,000 won. It's something like between 25 and 30 euros or dollar. The train ticket itself is about 15 euros or dollar return. When you count everything together, this is one of the most affordable DMZ tours you can do. From what I heard, when you take a bus, you most likely end up in a traffic jam when you leave Seoul in the morning rush hour. Most foreigners that will visit one of the Koreas will visit the DMZ. For this reason I think there are some improvements to make when it comes to information in English. Although it worked out fine in the train at the end. I do have to say this is one of the most bizarre trains I've ever been on. It looks more like I'm going to a theme park than a war zone. An information desk can be found in the middle of the train. But when you don't have any tickets for an excursion yet, you don't need to worry, because they will come to you and hand out papers and, well, just sell the excursion. You are not obligated to take the excursion, but when you don't do it, you have to wait for approximately 6 hours at the railway station. Some papers are overhanded and you have to fill in some data and give a signature for something I have no idea what I'm signing for. The train itself has some explanations and some well, really interesting artworks. Here you can see where the station is located. The route of the train is also visible at every door. Believe it or not, but when this train pops up in the timetable and you want to buy tickets and just use it as a commuter train, you can buy tickets to use it as a commuter train. Although nobody is commuting to the DMZ of course. But the train makes a couple of other stops as well. In the train you'll find some exhibitions, well there were some exhibitions with photographs of trains in Korea. I don't know if that has anything to do with the trains that cross the border between North and South Korea or that is just, well, an exhibition on South Korean or Korean trains in general. In other parts there were other pictures and what I understood these are also temporary exhibitions. There wasn't much information about in English and I couldn't find out how this was related to the DMZ or maybe it wasn't related at all. Well, there was some explanation for some pictures. Although I can't help I have the feeling that I'm going to a theme park, many of the artworks here are very symbolic and do spread the message of love and peace. At the doors near the driver you also find a picture of a bridge we'll be crossing soon. Near the information desk you can write peace messages on postcards and well it's like a kind of post office but then totally different. 
Tickets for this train do include a seat reservation. The seat numbers can be found above the windows. The views from the train are absolutely not as particular. Well, you cross some suburbs of Seoul and, well, see some countryside and then you're at the border. It's only a one hour ride to the border. And this is not even a fast train. Just before you enter the DMZ, you need to show your passport to the South Korean army, hand over the paper with no idea what I just filled in, and, well, just hop on the train again. At the end, you're not leaving the country anyway. After the check by the army at the station of Mingyam, the train is heading to the station of Dora San. From here you can also see the railway bridge that has been destroyed during the war. This train is crossing on a new railway bridge and the pictures you can see at the doors of the driver are the same bridge as we're crossing right now. At the south side of the old railway bridge there is well a kind of viewing point or monument but you can visit nowadays. This bridge is very symbolic in the Korean War. At the moment we are crossing the bridge, there will be, well, a kind of live video from the cabin and the TV screens all over the train. And some sentimental music will be played. When you're near the end of the bridge, the back cameras will be activated and you have the same view but the other way around. Not long after this, the train arrives at the station of Dora San. This station is ready to serve passengers when peace will happen. At the end of the video, I will give you a little tour of this station. All passengers received a kind of a tag that they had to hang around their neck and when you walk in the DMC they can see to which tour group you belong. You're obligated to wear this in the DMC. This all might be very handy since we almost lost one passenger at the first stop. Many people that do come here with an other tour that goes by a bus or maybe private also visit this railway station. I found this image on the website of Visit Korea. And well, this is basically what the tour looks like. The first stop of the bus is Dorasan Peace Park. Here you can find some sculptures and well, pictures, well, exhibitions that represent peace and unification of North and South Korea. It all felt a bit unreal to me. I'm at the most heavily armed border in the world and people are taking selfies with military vehicles with some artwork on it. The message of peace, love and maybe unification is very clear over here. After the peace park, the bus will go to a place for lunch. Well, lunch is not included in the package, but it's not expensive. At this moment, I felt like the cat that was belonging more or less to the restaurant was the most interesting point of photography. And personally, I totally agree. I mean, this cat is the boss. He makes the rules, or see, and well, people just make the line in a different way because the cats decide to lay here. I mean, cats are awesome. But hey, I don't make videos about cats, I make videos about trains and in this case an excursion by train. At this place you'll also find a small souvenir shop that contains a convenience store as well and well, there are like many of them in the DMZ. After the lunch stop the bus is heading to the Dora Observatory. From the Dora Observatory you have a good view at the North Korean border. Everything is clearly in Korean and English. What is cold outside? Well, you can just sit here and watch the border. Information about what you see is played constantly and also highlighted here on screens. 
This is in both English and Korean. At the rooftop, you have an open view along the border. After the stop at the Dora Observatory, the bus is heading to the third intervention tunnel. At this point, a movie will be shown that's being played in English and Korean. <laughs> After this, you may enter the third intervention tunnel. North Korea tried to interface into South Korea by digging tunnels. Well, the South Koreans found out anyway, and they found until now four tunnels. Who knows what they might find in the future? You're not allowed to take your phone or camera or anything in the tunnel, so you're not allowed to take pictures or videos. This is pretty much all I have, and well, this is allowed. At the parking lot, well, and like in many other places, you also find artworks that, well, again, represent unification. After visiting the third intervention tunnel, the bus is heading back to the railway station. The tour was completely in Korean. Well, I knew more or less where we were heading to, so I did some research at home, but I strongly recommend you, when you have an internet connection, use Google Translate. You can buy SIM cards pretty much all over South Korea, they are special tourist data SIM cards, and they work perfectly. This way, I could actually follow the tour guide as well with what she was saying. Back at the railway station, we have some time just to wait around a bit. It looks like a normal railway station, but when you take a closer look, it's not a normal railway station. You'll find a souvenir shop and there are lots of artworks. Just like in the first train I had in Korea, there was also this clear ambition of trains that were going from Seoul to, well, Russia, Moscow and St. Petersburg. I went to China by train from the Netherlands and I would love the idea to go to Korea by train from the Netherlands, but unfortunately I have to take a boat or a plane at this moment, at least when visiting South Korea. For when trains will cross the border, there's even a special area where custom formalities can take place. At the platform, the train is ready for departure back to Seoul. Next to the platform you also find the Unification of North and South Museum, what is basically in an old cargo carriage. After this, the train is heading back direction Seoul, and about quarter to six, the train will be at Seoul station. So, back in the tube of Seoul station. This was a rather interesting trip. Um, I hope you liked the video. Please give me a thumbs up when you like it and when you'd like to see more trip reports by train just subscribe to my channel. Cheers!